All right, so we're going to jump straight into an NLP example. So this is going to be just a completely made up company, com completely made up product, ABC, ABC Machinery, Gizmos, and what's it? So kind of just talk you talk you through. But I will also put the description. I will also put the problem statement in the description below, so that when I'm doing the working, you can still be able to follow along and link some of the ideas. So. This is a company making two products, the Gizmo and the Watsuit, using two machines, the Nodulator and the Dinker. So, and we and it looks like uh, the current market enables ABC to sell as many as these products, the Gizmo retailing for 30 and the Watsuit for 80. So, and we can kind of see here that, it's, that we want to maximize sales, so that should be reasonably forward. So, we've got the limitations time available on the machine, so that's going to be, that's definitely going to be one of our constraints, the Gizmo needs two hours. And the dinker needs four out. And uh, sorry, the limitation is on the time of error on both machines, the nodulator and the dinker. So okay, and then and then we got the constraints. There's only one eighty hours available on. Oops, sorry, I meant to use the highlight. Only one eighty hours available each calendar month for the nodulator, which one sixty hours available for the dinker. Okay, so so um so there's a few ways to kind of address. Um, well, I wouldn't say necessarily a few ways to address this, but um, it's trying to come up with an LP model can be difficult, and so and uh, it's it's one of those things that you kind of um you try to figure out through intuition, hopefully kind of just being being able to adapt to examples. So some so some of the starting examples would be relatively straight, well hopefully simple enough. So the as I as mentioned in the previous video, usually decision variables will refer to something that is to be produced and this is something that we can apply here so um so say so say if i do the decision variables and then so i don't i don't necessarily need to write decision variables and i should really just reduce the okay so what are the things that are to be produced we've got the gizmo and we've got the what's it so I'm just gonna make it make it as simple as possible. So we're gonna make G is defined as the number of gizmos made, and uh, as you can as you, um so that's 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 um the gizmo made up, and then we got the what's it we got the what's it as well. So as you can imagine, so so we're gonna make W is gonna be the number of what's it's made. So for these simple examples, the decision variables will be kind of like, uh, you know, just to, just the products to be produced. But as mentioned before, it will not necessarily always be the case. Now, in in terms of choosing the letters for your decision variables, one of the reasons I um you can see I purposely chose G for Gizmos and W for what's it's um and you will have and you will notice in the exercises that the solutions are just X and Y. Um, essentially there 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 is no consensus on this. My general preference is that when you choose your decision variables, you give them names that makes it easier to refer them by. So in this case, if like if I make G to G for Gizmos, then you see G, then you know it's going to be for Gizmos. Whereas if I do X and Y for Gizmos and what's this, then you kind of actually need to look back at the definition to kind of just see, oh, okay, X means Gizmos, Y means what's this. So there, there is no, there, there's, there's no consensus on this one, so, but... Um, it's kind of a, it's kind of in general uh, a general programming paradigm in that um, you want to be able to make your, your your variable names very obvious or just kind of just kind of easy enough for someone else reading your code, someone else reading your working to to be able to infer what they are. So here I'm going to use G and W. You can use X and Y. It doesn't really matter as long as you properly define them as your decision variables. So so now now the next bit is the, is basically the objective function function and and basically and in, in in most cases the objective function would just be a simple one line equation and um, we, we can see here that with the objective function the objective is to maximize sales and to maximize sales that means we and to maximize sales when we won't be able to sell as many gizmos and watches as possible so we can see with the gizmo retailing for 30 and the watch is for 80 so it means that for each gizmo I sell I get 30 bucks Thirty dollars for each what's it I sell I get eighty dollars. So you can imagine that the objective function is that we want to maximize. Oh, sorry, that's not meant to be the highlighter. Uh, so for the objective function, we want to maximize uh, the the number of gizmos sold. But 
we also we, we also we want to maximize the sale so in this case it's going to be so for the gizmos it will be 30 g so the total amount of sales made by selling gizmos will be represented as 30 g and in a similar vein for the what sits that will be 80 w 80 times the number of what sits will give you the total sales amounts for the what sits so and um and then so lastly we've got the constraints and you can probably imagine there's probably the, there's only um in this case there's two constraints and we kind of figure that out eventually so it says that so and um it says the the limitation is time available on the machine gizmo needs three hours on the nodulator and four hours on the dinker so and then where's the what's it needs three hours on the nodulator and two hours on the dinker so um so i'm just kind of just trying to get through to my head so i guess so one way, one way you can address the constraints is basically um, to kind of just give it a, a single one sentence description, and I do highly encourage you to do that if, if for some reason you're doing a subject that requires you to do this in the working, and just really helps to refer back to to it later. So why would do something like is like I would like say nodulator constraint, uh, you later. So in this case, um, in this case the gizmo needs two hours on the nodulator. That means for each gizmo I make. It takes two hours on the nodulator, so that's going to be two G, and then the the what's it needs three hours on the nodulator, so each what's it I make is going to take three hours on the nodulator. So we're, we're not we're not going to really worry so much about scheduling problems so much. So we're just going to assume that it's kind of just chunks of hours that we can take out of the total. So let's assume that didn't turn out right. Um, part of me. Test two G plus three W, and then now the total number of hours available on the nodulator is is one hundred and eighty. So it's going to be less than or equal to one eighty. We could we cannot spend more than one eighty hours on the nodulator, but we can definitely spend less than one eighty hours on the nodulator. And it's also, it should also kind of it should also kind of make sense that we will not necessarily spend all the one eighty hours on the nodulator. So we don't want to make it a strict equality. That's why we want to make it a less than or equal to so to to account for the scenario that we might use all 180 hours but we might not use all of the 180 hours as well so so that's our nodulator constraint and then um and then put a dinker constraint and you, you can you can you can make them more descriptive in, instead of kind of just writing nodulator and dinker you could write um the num the you could you could write something like um say number of hours on nodulator less than or equal to 180 it, whichever way helps you kind of just unravel the information uh, a bit more so and then and then for the dinker uh, we're gonna do, do the same hours so the, so the gizmo needs four hours on the dinker so that's 4g and then plus the uh, the what's it needs two hours on the dinker so that's gonna be 2w and the restriction and the total at number of hours on the dinker is 160 so it's going to be less than or equal to 160 um so the second equation we can actually reduce and um so we just divide it we divide it through by two so um i can just easily do that 2g plus w less than or equal to what uh sorry that should be 80 not 160. okay so that's basically our model set up and um i kind of and from here i kind of just want to discuss a few different ways that uh, i guess one different way you can organize the information so um so one of the ways you can organize the information into a table and um and 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 it, this is this is kind of more in terms of like how, how you prefer to organize things because it's like for me for someone with me who's kind of experience of building these kind of models it's very easy to organize the information in my head but for you know for you if you're learning might be a bit harder so one way you can organize the table of information is like you can say okay i'm gonna have the gizmos and what i want to do is set up a table of hours or like, like i guess a resources table might be might be a nice, better way to do it so what's it and then and then i've got the nodulator and then I've got the dinker. So, so for example, the, so in this case, the gizmo uh, spends two hours on the nodulator, and uh, and the dink and the giz uh, and the, the gizmo spends four hours on the dinker, and then um and then I'm kind of just looking at the constraints, but I could also just get it from the problem description. So the what's it 
get some three hours on the nodulator and then the, the one signal suspends two hours on the dinka. And then so the and so uh and so you've kind of got an, a nice little table here. I'll just quickly just just get some lines like that. And then at the bottom, at the bottom, you know you know the nodulator and Dika have restrictions. So you have so the nodulator has a restriction 180 total hours, and the Dinka has 160 total hours remaining. So you can you can basically see here as a result that um that you can kind of see the nodulator constraint. By purple is basically this constraint over here, and then you can also see that the Dinka constraint actually represents this constraint here. You can also invert the you can, you can also invert the table the other way around. That works as well. the The important part is kind of just um the 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 the, the part I want to stress is that it's totally okay to or reorganize the information into a different way to kind of just help you out on um how, how kind of just help you out on figuring out what the what the LP is gonna be. So. That's the first of four examples. See you on the next video.